So in thermal physics, we're going to look at uh, the following key ideas. The first one um, about Brownian motion and what that means in terms of uh, molecules and how they move and collide into each other. Um, you will learn about good and bad absorbers and emitters of infrared radiation. You'll be required to describe experiments to demonstrate good and bad conductors and to explain conduction in terms of molecular vibrations. And lastly, convection. We'll look at convection in fluids and relate that to density changes. So we need to distinguish between the idea of thermal energy and temperature. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. It can also be measured in degrees Kelvin. And it indicates how hot something is. Um, whereas heat, heat energy, is obviously a form of energy and it is measured in joules. Um, the hotter an object is, the more thermal energy it contains. But heat and temperature are not the same thing. So they are related by that idea. But it's important to distinguish them. Certainly between degrees Celsius or Kelvin and the unit for energy being the joule, that's one big distinction. And really um, the idea that temperature is a measurement of how hot something is, that's the definition. You need to keep that in mind, whereas heat heat or thermal um, concepts are to do with forms of energy. So keep those ideas separate. Here's an example to um, think about. If you look at the soldering iron and compare that to the bowl of soup, question one, which has the highest temperature? And question two, which has the greatest heat energy? Now, if you think about um, the very tip, the very pointy tip of the soldering iron, it will have a much higher temperature than the soup. Um, so that's pretty obvious. But the greatest heat energy, well, that has a lot to do with the size of the two objects and the fact that the soup is much larger and therefore will contain more uh, thermal energy than the soldering tip. That's not so obvious, perhaps. Even though its um, temperature is much lower because there's just more of it. So you can see the idea that the total heat energy does depend uh, in part on the mass of the substance we're considering. Right, the transfer by conduction. Um, this occurs always from hot to cold regions. And if you, for example, hold an iron bar in a fire, thermal energy will travel along the bar to your hand, and this could be rather painful. Hence, you can see the picture, the workers using gloves, and also, of course, the wooden handle of the hammer would be helpful to not conduct that energy through. Certainly, holding the bar fairly far back from the hot end would be useful. The main protection really is the gloves in this case, the gloves being a poor conductor of heat energy. Other conductors and insulators, well, basically anything that doesn't allow good thermal conduction, um, we call them insulators, and things that do allow good thermal conduction, we call them conductors. So on the left-hand side you can see silvery, shiny, metal, metallic um, conductors. And on the right-hand side, you can see the sort of air-filled, uh, fibrous-type materials, which are certainly not metal, and therefore poor conductors of heat energy. The experiment which you may get to see, um, showing how thermal conduction works, and also helps us to distinguish between different metals as to which could be the better conductor. You have a brass ring um, and 
uh, sorry, not a brass ring, you have a piece of brass metal here, copper metal, iron and aluminium. They are all uh, almost connected to each other, not quite. There's a small tiny gap along this uh, X um, position under which a flame is put. The flame therefore heats each of those four metals um, fairly evenly. If you then suspend a drawing pin at the bottom of each of these ends here, of the metals, um, the time that it takes for those um, drawing pins attached with wax to fall off indicates the better conductor. So the explanation of, of conduction in terms of molecules. When a solid material is heated, the molecules vibrate faster because they've gained energy. When the molecules are vibrating, they will collide, or just collide with neighboring molecules. This causes the neighboring molecules to vibrate faster as well. A bit of a chain reaction occurs, so the thermal energies pass along the chain of molecules from one end of the material to the other, and this process is called thermal conduction. What also happens in good conductors, like any metal really, except for uh, a few alloys, but most metals will have free electrons, and they will be able to whiz around a lot faster as the metal is heated and spread the energy even more efficiently. So good, good conductors allow the free electrons to rapidly transmit that kinetic energy, that input of energy from heat, down the metal length very quickly. Heat transfer by convection. Well, convection occurs only in fluids, that is gases and liquids. It doesn't occur in solids. For obvious reasons, we can't have chunks of solids floating up in the air. What happens with gas is it will actually rise as it is heated, and that has to do with the reduction of density caused by the expansion of volume. The mass of the gas molecules remains constant, hence the density reduces, and um, hence the gas molecules on average will rise above. The, the, that is, the hotter molecules will rise above the cooler uh, molecules. This process is called convection. Convection is also the main method of heat transfer in liquids. So in both of these um, two phases of matter, the molecules are free to move and flow from one region to another. And that is the key aspect of convection. You can see this diagram here um, shows what happens when a Bunsen flame <coughs> is placed in the middle of a beaker of water. This area will become um, heated first, hence less dense, and so rising of those molecules will occur. As they rise, they cool, and other heated molecules push them to the side. As they cool, they will, of course, be allowed to come back down again, and so a cycle is created. This is called a convection current. A very similar thing occurs with um, weather systems. During the daytime, um, because land heats up quicker than water, having a um, much lower heat capacity, thermal heat capacity, than water, it heats up faster. The air molecules just above the land, therefore, will rise as they get heated from the land and produce this um, particular current. Cool air above the water, relatively cooler air, is drawn in to replace the rising warm air. And so you actually have, have an onshore breeze during the day. At night time it reverses. And that is because while the water has a very high specific heat capacity, it will retain the heat for longer, so the land cools down quicker, Therefore, the molecules above the water this time are slightly warmer on average. They'll rise and draw cool air from the land back out to sea or to the lake or whatever. That produces an offshore breeze. In the middle of these two um, pa um, patterns, you get a nice calm 
lull. And that's usually evident at a lakeside at dawn or dusk. Last method of transfer of radiation, or sorry, heat, is through infrared radiation. Now it travels as an electromagnetic wave, um, which is part of a big spectrum of waves. Um, we need to understand that visible light is also part of that spectrum, so the light that you can see, as well as infrared, the radiation that you can feel as your skin um, is, is warmed by it. So when you feel the warmth um, that is radiated from a fire or from the sun, you are feeling infrared rays striking your skin. You can't see them, but you can sense them with, with your skin. Um, of course, this is how thermal energy is, travel, um, is, is able to travel across empty space through the vacuum of space from the sun to the earth. So without this, we wouldn't really be here. Now, it cannot con conduct or convect through space simply because there are no molecules to enable that to happen in the vacuum of space. Uh, you need to memorise this diagram here showing the order of these um, rays, including UV, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, infrared. Knowing the, the actual order of the radiations in terms of their wavelength, their relative size of wavelength, very small wavelength, high energy, um, getting progressively longer wavelengths and lower energy.